Welcome back to your hometown marina, back at our home port of Glencoe Marina, down the service department with our in-house expert, Captain Steve Lemons, to talk about something we're sorry to say we've seen more than a couple of already this season, yes. and that's boat fires. Yes, probably the worst thing in the world on water. It, it, you hate to see it when you're out and about. You really hate to be on the boat when it happens. Definitely. What are some of the causes of them? And especially when you see them at the beginning of the season, what has someone missed? Fuel leaking in the bill, just a spark can set off a fire. Ungrounded uh, picture on a boat or something like that. Refueling, that's always a bad thing. You always got to watch that. Uh, not running the blower when we sh should and what the blower does. When you come in and get fuel, you should turn on the blower while they are putting gas in. And then what that does is remove any hot vapors out of the engine compartment. Okay. Because there's a certain amount of heat, even though the motors are water cooled, there's a certain amount of heat that comes off of the motors. And once again, flammable conditions. We got fuel mixture in there. Uh, maybe the boat hasn't got a grounded fitting on the fuel tank. If you stick a light in there, it could spark right there and stack electricity, and it's done. The boat driver needs to raise the engine hatch up, look down the bilge, and so if we see any odd fluids, I mean, red doesn't just show up in the bottom of the boat by magic. Okay. That, so it could be trim fluid, it could be uh, power steering fluid, it could be transmission fluid. Same with fuel. When we see fuel in the bilge, we'll smell it, but you also see, like, when we pour gas on top of water, it floats. Mm -hmm. So you'll see it on top of the water in the bilge. That's stuff that needs to be addressed. One, we need to find out what's causing it because that means we've got a, either a fuel leak or a right. fluid leak. Right. Fire or no fire, you've yeah. got an issue there. Yeah, we need to address it. And uh, one of the things that we do at Glencove is, is when our mechanics go out in winterizing and dewinterizing, we look all those systems over to see if we see any leaks or if we notice a red fuel, a red fluid in the bottom of the boat. We figure out what it is and we call a customer and say, you need to be aware that your transmission leaking. And that's something that we all should do because that is a fire hazard. Now, a very popular item on boats these days, growing even more popular, are the incredible sound system. You pointed out, though, not all boats are ready made to handle that kind of wiring. Right. I mean, most of the wiring harnesses that are in the boats now are, of course, certified for the run. In other words, if it's 10 feet long and it's pulling 5 amps, it has to be a certain size wire. Most of the new guys or new upgrades that we're doing in stereo is pull a lot of amperage. So that water has to be the right size. If not, what happens, it heats up. And once it heats up, it breaks the uh, insulation off. And then, of course, we've got our spark to get to the fuel that's in the bilge. So it's something that we have to address. Unless you have a lot of training and experience in wiring a stereo system in your boat, it's not really a do-it-yourself project, is it? it? You know, we do it in our cars, but the problem with that, that is it's not in a closed system. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're, we're driving down the highway, we don't have fuel vapors in the car, but a boat, we're kind of trapped, and, you know, we don't think of things like that, that the wire's overheating. One of the things, too, that a lot of people don't think of, you know, I mean, when we talk about motors, and a lot of guys know motors, you know, you say, I got a 454 Chevrolet in my, well, they think it's a car motor. It's not necessarily a car motor because the starter's not the same, the alternator's not the same, and the old carburetors are not the same. And the reason that you can't take a car carburetor and put on a boat is it doesn't have a flash suppressor in it. Even the starters, they have metal screens in them, so when they spin over, that arc can't get out of it. There's a screen in there. That's, once again, it's the low point in the bilge. It's going to pick up the fumes and pop. So someone can be extremely adept at working on their car, and that knowledge just doesn't <coughs> translate to a Yeah, it, 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 they don't just co-mingle. Because if you start smelling smoke, turn the boat off and put out your flag for yes. help. Just don't keep yes. trying to push it. <clears throat> yeah, and, and, and especially, I mean, everybody should know where the fire extinguisher are on the boat. Right. Uh, I'm not saying that you ought to stay and try to fight the fire, but at least you should know where it is so you can get everybody off Life the boat safely. Life jackets and fire exactly. extinguishers. For more excellent boating advice, check out the Glencoe Marina website at glencomarina.com. Holly Lift Boat Lifts. Your boat is a major investment. Make sure it sits on a poly lift. When you need a boat lift to raise your boat out of the water, choose the one voted best boat lift at the lake. Choose poly lift. Any size, built with the best quality construction, a lifetime warranty on the tanks, and the service to stand behind it. We don't just build boat lifts, we build poly lifts. We don't just build boat lifts, we build poly lifts.
we cruised on over to Captain's Kitchen to taste the latest dish cooked up by kitchen manager John Stubblefield. We're going to start off with a DJ Scampi. It's our Friday night special. It has sea scallops, shrimp, crab, on top of linguine with butter, garlic, and parmesan. Bring three tablespoons clarified butter to a low simmer in a medium saucepan. Add fresh sea scallops and cook until they appear white around the edges. Add peeled shrimp to the scallops and stir, turning halfway through cooking time. Total cooking time for seafood is approximately three minutes. Stir pre-cooked crab meat in with the shrimp and scallops. Add one tablespoon additional butter and a tablespoon of chopped garlic. Continue to stir mixture to ensure that seafood does not scorch on either side. Pre-cooked linguine can be reheated by placing it in a strainer and briefly dropping it in boiling water. Strain and place pasta on serving plate. Cover with a scrumptious seafood saute. Generously sprinkle with fresh Parmesan cheese and a pinch of parsley. Serve with warm garlic bread and enjoy! All the recipes from the Captain's Kitchen can be found online at www.glencovemarina.com. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Your Hometown Marina. You can catch all the episodes of Your Hometown Marina on the Glencoe Marina homepage at www.glencomarina.com.